Hey, so Too much salt. you guys know, did you know? The fundamental thing of algebra says you can write any polynomial function as a product of binomials. Yeah. Yeah. You just said a lot of words and I can't understand those words. I get it. Okay. Hard. So pretty much this. Any polynomial can be written in this form. As a product of linear factors. What are those? What's the one, the two, and the n? Um, I'm just trying to show you guys. There's, there's uh, multiple numbers or multiple factors that you can have that you can rewrite a polynomial function with. So, your job is to um, on some of these problems is to write what the what the function is in um, this this form, the totally factored form. So that's I mean have that in your head. This is. The fundamental theorem of algebra. What's funny about this theorem is that all of algebra does not rest on this one theorem, but it, they do call it fundamental. It is important, don't get me wrong, but we do a lot of other algebra without knowing it. So I, I don't know, this is a lot. It's a lot of words that we don't use very often, and I'm saying them really quickly. Product of factors that are irreducible over the rationals. So that means they're real numbers and they're rational, they're not irrational. That means there's no square root of two, there's no pi's or anything like that. Uh, B says, as a product of linear and quadratic factors, linear means uh, the highest degree is, is one, and a quadratic, the highest degree is two, or the highest exponent. And then C, a completely factored form. Completely factored form is what I was just showing you guys, x minus k, so like in that form, all the way. So the first thing we gotta do is just write it in factored form. All right, factored form. That's it. Like nothing really, really fancy, just factored form. So let's factor this as much as we can. There's one, two, three, four, five terms. Um, so there's no like special way that we know how to factor this, but they do give us a common factor. So we're going to take that, or that not common factor. They give us a factor of it. So uh, let's take that guy out. I'm going to use long division. If you like reverse tabular method, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to do long division. All right, we have x to the fourth minus 3x squared minus, uh, not squared, x to the third minus x squared, uh, minus 12, x, and then minus 20. <clears throat> so if you guys are doing this, what you're trying to do is you're looking at the first term, and you're looking at this first term, and you're saying, what can I multiply to this first term to get that term? Okay, that's what you're thinking, that's what you're doing. So uh, it is x squared, and I like putting x squared above the other x squared, because I like to keep my terms lined up. And then I multiply this to this, to this, and then I get um, a number right here that I'm gonna subtract. So that's what I get, I get x to the fourth, plus 0x to the second, um, uh, plus 4x squared. Actually, that should be to the third. Okay, so now I subtract. When I subtract, I like to change the signs and add them together. I don't like thinking subtraction because I easily make mistakes that way. This is 0. This is negative 3x to the third, and this over here is negative 5x to the second power. Then I bring down the next term, negative 12x. There should be 1, 2, 3 terms because I have 1, 2, 3 um, uh, term polynomial that I'm dividing it by. Now I look at this first term and this first term again, and I think to myself, self, I think negative three x would do it. Uh, negative three x times that, then then that, and then that. All right, let's do it. Three, negative three x times the first one's gonna be negative three x to the third. Then we're gonna get positive zero x to the second power. And then we're gonna get negative 12 x. Then I'm gonna subtract. So I change all the signs, we, woo, we. Okay, and then I add it together. What do I get? I get negative five x to the second power and Ooh, I, what happens when I add those together? I get zero. I get zero. Oh my goodness. And then I bring down my last term, my last term, which is negative 20. Look at that first term. Look at the first term. Uh, what times the first term will give me negative 5x squared? It'll be negative 5. So I get negative 5x squared. 0x. And the last one, negative 5 times 4 is positive 20, which we got a 0. We got a remainder of 0. If we subtract these, what I would do is I'd change the sign of all these and then subtract or add together. Uh oh, something happened. You yeah, oh, that's supposed to, this is supposed to be a negative, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so this is really a positive 20. Oh, my mistake, sorry guys. So we have a remainder of zero. That's big news. That's actually true. It should You should get a zero, otherwise you made a mistake because they said that this was a factor. If that's a factor, then there should be no remainder when we're finished. So now we have x squared plus four times what that would give me this 
and that is x squared minus 3x minus 5. x squared minus 3x minus 5. Okay, really quickly, does this factor more? Let's see. What times what gives me negative 5 as it gives me negative 3? Nothing. So no, it doesn't. Uh, that's it. That's, that's all you can do. That's the first part is just factor it. So to do the next part, what we're going to do is uh, I'm not going to touch this guy because I'm going to get imaginary numbers when I touch this guy. I know that because I'm thinking really quick in my head. If I were to solve this right here, I would get x squared equals negative 4, and then I'm going to get a ear, uh, an imaginary number. It's going to be not real. And the second thing, B said that they had to be real. Okay? Now, you can be a, you can be a real number and be irrational. Okay, but this one's not gonna give me anything real. So I'm gonna leave him, I'm not gonna touch him. Uh, but the other one, this guy is a quadratic, which means I can write him as a product of two binomial factors. X minus something, X minus something. Well, what the heck is that something going to be? I don't know. But what you're supposed to put right here are the zeros. Is there a way for me to find the zeros of this without being able to factor it? Yeah. Quadratic formula. You guys remember the quadratic formula? Negative B plus negative B minus B. B. Yeah. Okay, I need some workspace. All right, you stop that. Big brains. You're like, I got a big brain. You're flexing. Stop it. Flexing. Okay, so now I'm going to look for, what I'm looking for are the zeros of this trinomial so that I can write these. This is for B. Okay? All right, so um, I go negative B. So it's negative, negative 3. And negative, negative 3. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 9, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 5, all divided by 2a, and a is just 1. So this is just a 2 right here. This is just a positive 3. I don't need to write all that stuff. Let's just um, go like this. And then let's go to the party and party. We have 9 minus, nope, plus 20. Ooh, that's good news. You know why? So now we know that it's not going to be imaginary numbers. All right, so now we have 3 plus square root of 29 divided by 2 and 3 minus square root of 29 divided by 2. These are zeros, right? These are zeros. Uh, they're irrational zeros, um, but they are real zeros. If you were actually to graph this, you will actually have an x-intercept that equals this and an x-intercept that equals this, but it'll be some nasty decimal. That's how you can see where these go on the graph. But anyways, you don't care about that. Um, you just write 3 plus square root of 29 over 2, 3 minus square root of 29 over 2. There you go. This is B. Done. But then the very last one says, write it as a product of, of imaginary or irrational. It doesn't matter. Okay? So this is what we have to do now. We have to... Find the zeros of that guy. What? What's that? What's that? Yeah. Uh, now this guy's nice because we don't have to use the quadratic formula because there's no x term. Because there's no x term, I can just solve for x. I get negative 4, and then I take the square root of both sides. I get plus or minus the square root of negative 4, which can be rewritten as plus or minus i times the square root of 4. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Which can be written as plus or minus 2i. Everybody's, everybody's a square? Yeah? Okay. Uh, x minus positive 2i, x minus negative 2i, and then we have this other stuff. Oh man, I have to write all that too. x minus 3 plus square root of 29 over 2, wow. x minus 3 minus square root of 29 over 2. Wow. That is the answer Awful. to C. That is a